All right, we are back live here on uh, Toxic Radio in Paradelphia land. And <laughs> and with us online here, hopefully, uh, we, we have one of the stars of uh, Apparition, uh, Miss Lily Bourdain. Yeah, I'm right here. Hey. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, mix-up there. <laughs> that, that was on me. We, we had so many people calling in tonight that uh, it got all mixed up here. I thought you were calling later on. <laughs> but I'm glad you called back. Oh, I, I can no no no. no, 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 I'm glad you called back, yes. Rick just wrote oh. down the wrong numbers. I wrote the wrong times down. My bad, sorry. Oh. You're perfectly fine. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, let's get into this here. Uh, Lily, we have uh, you on the line, and we have uh, Pete here in studio, as we mentioned earlier. And Pete is the writer. Hey, Lily, how you doing? <laughs> Pete is the writer. I'm and great. The, and cool. Lily, one of the stars of the show, uh, of the movie. Now, uh, I guess, uh, Pete, we'll start with you. Where did the idea for uh, Apparition come from? Um, the, the producer actually came up to me and said, "You guys have anything, uh, any horror scripts you could you could write that'll be cheap?" I said, "Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll come up with one, sure." So <laughs> and from there, actually, it was uh, Doug Latessis. Doug, um, you guys did a um, an investigation over at the hotel. Uh, we yeah. have a, we have a hotel that's uh, three hundred years years old or whatever. And I was doing a lot of work at night, um, fixing up rooms and stuff. And just you hear a lot of creepy shit. I mean, just your imagination plays with you. And just from that kind of got me interested in the idea of, you know, a haunted house, stuff like that. And when I, my co-writer Andy and I started putting a, a story together, it became more of a psychological thing. It's kind of like that, that, that's what really interests us more about, about the story. Rather than a ghost story, make it more about, you know, the mind and, and how, it, how it breaks down after a while. Scariest thing there is. Right. True. Yeah. And th- yeah, and that kind of, pl- yeah, you're right. That kind of plays into making a really good horror movie. It's, it's not about the gore, really. It's about the, the mind screw, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I guess uh, was this based on anything in particular, or did you just come out come up with this on you know behind whole cloth or from whole cloth? I was uh, like I said, it was just the experience of working late at night in this in this creepy hotel. The hotel <laughs> does have a history, and like I said, Doug did oh, an yeah. investigation. Big they found time. some stuff, and um, just from that, just and it kind of so we sat down and was like, what all right, what would what would we find creepy? And uh, it just from there, it just kind of you know kind of snowballed, and we just you know just yeah. the story was born from that. Yeah. Now, Lily, you play uh, uh, who is the uh, the character? She you plays play Jamie. Movie? Jamie. Jamie. Yep. Uh, and you, you come in, you come in kind of uh, halfway through the movie, so to speak. Uh, what, what was uh, what was that like uh, for you doing a, a horror movie like that? Is this something that uh, you've done in the past? I haven't really actually done much horror. Um, I did a zombie movie called Extinction uh, last a uh, couple of months ago, um, which was like a, a, basically a zombie movie. But before that, no, not really. Yeah. Um, I'm drama, mostly drama. Okay. And so um, I'm very dramatic. So uh, <laughs> there's a reason I get cast. <laughs> no, but um, but the horror wasn't even like the, the foremost element. I think that the drama was the strength of the script, and that's what I really liked about it when I read it. Yeah. Now, that this... It's actually a drama, and then the other stuff that happens is not the payoff really i mean it's like stuff that happens but you don't know what's real and what's imagined so um so so yeah so i I didn't think of it as a horror actually if you ask me is it a horror it's not really a horror um there's no real gore there's there's no um like there's a car accident but we don't see the actual car accident happen Mm -hmm. we see an image of um one of the characters who died in in uh, in the lead male character's imagination, um, and of course she's covered in blood there, but it's and it's pretty disgusting. But <laughs> there, it's not like I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't call it. I guess it, it, it's categorized as a horror movie, but that's not right. What came at me first? Yeah. Now, is this? Uh, did you have to prepare any different for a movie like this than a dramatic movie? No, because my character doesn't really come face to face with these um, with these ghosts. Uh, she's she's freaked out a little bit, and she sees it through the the character Doug's eyes. You had Jody on before me, right? No, he hasn't. Not yet. yet. He'll be on after. Oh, he hasn't come on. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, so. So sorry. Um, I thought he was on before me. No, so okay. um, he. He, um, you know, all this stuff starts happening without giving too much away, and I'm just like, I don't see most of this stuff. I'm just seeing it through his eyes. Right. Now, <laughs> and we don't know at what point it becomes where I see it too. Right. 
Now, Pete, um, writing this writing this movie, um, did you have any any inspiration while you were writing it from other horror movies that you may have liked, scenes that you may have pulled that were kind of an homage to other <laughs> other movies that you you've uh, enjoyed? Oh yeah, I mean, anytime you write, you're always you're always homaging you're always uh you know you're always <laughs> yeah. stealing you're always robbing um we talked a little bit about uh um uh the shining was, okay uh, was a pretty big just because of the isolation factor and, right. and what happens to uh to um jack nicholson's character um the exorcist uh scared the hell out of me i, I don't know if we really touched on that in the film but i just remember when we were writing and like the, the nights that 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 i'd be writing or and just like you know two o'clock in the morning and you know the whole house is asleep and you're just at a desk and you start thinking about stuff like that. That 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 kind of chilled me a little bit. Just kind of like trying to trying to capture that essence um, yeah. in some of the stuff. But um, yeah, like I said, the stuff we were the stuff we were drawing from was very uh, like she like like Lily said, it wasn't gory at all. It's just the stuff that that just scary because it's 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 behind, it's what's in the dark. It's 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 right. Not like not like that. I feel like that's the most horrific thing you can think of because that kind of stuff can actually happen. You know, somebody yeah. can go insane, and and when you put that aspect, like it's not like something's jumping up and attacking you like some kind of weird monster or whatnot. I mean, this is, again, like I said, this is the brain. This is, <laughs> this could really right. happen to somebody and make them, make them go the way that they do. Well, so. the sh- right. Yeah. And you mentioned the sh- both the shining and the exorcist. And t- to me, those two movies are in a way similar in that there's isolation. It's, it's yep. obvious in the, in the, in the shining, that's a physical isolation, but in the exorcist, it's really the mother and the daughter isolated yeah. from the rest of society and trying to deal with, you know, this crazy thing that's going on. Exactly. So yeah. that's that's very much plays into to this script as well. Exactly. exactly. It, it, the way we the way the, the script was structured is that he he moves to a farmhouse um, and he isolates himself. I mean, even even in that in that respect, you know, he's he's on a secluded piece of land and and no one can touch him. But when people do try to reach out to him, like Lily will test um, uh, her character, and there's another character, a friend of his that that he's really close with in the beginning, and they kind of drift apart. You can just see that when when especially with the, with his scene when he comes in later and sees w- how how the main character Doug is deteriorating, you can just see how he's closed himself off from any aspect of reality. It's just like he he's just this thing is consuming him. Right. And that was another thing when uh, when we were talking about this, we actually talked about. This is almost like a case in like someone being devoured by cancer. So it's kind of like just someone sitting and just letting something eat them alive and waiting to die. So yeah. that, that, that kind of directed the writing a little bit. Yeah. Now, Lily, did you um, have any preconceptions about the uh, paranormal uh, personally before you took on the role? Um, you know, I, I have had strange experiences, and I do know that I don't know a lot. Um, and that I do believe in, in, in multidimensionality. I believe there's more than just three dimensions, and um, I believe in parallel universes. I mean, I I believe in all this stuff because nobody's proven they don't exist, and so uh, my imagination runs pretty wild. I do believe that there there can be spirits, but I've never experienced I've never experienced a ghost. Hmm. Per se, I did have an experience once where I was falling asleep. And um, I woke up to a pair of green eyes staring at me, and it was terrifying. And I woke up gasping, like they do in the movies. Wow. <laughs> and I'd, let, I'd left the candle on, on my wicker bedside table. So, and I realized that that was a warning of some sort. Whether it was my subconscious, or a guardian angel, or a spirit helper guide, I don't know what it was, but something that felt very real and it was very important that, that this presence wake me because otherwise, you know, I could have burned to death or, or, or I could have burned, you know, a part of the furniture or the house. Or right. Yeah. Wow. Now, yeah. now, uh, Lily, how, all right. Now, how did you see your character as Jamie in the movie? Like, how, how did you see from, from your perspective of, of, of the character you played? Um, I try not to judge, but I do see what she was doing and I saw that she was very much into Doug's character and, and, and finding out what makes him tick. She was kind of obsessed with him mm-hmm. in a way that he was obsessed with the how. Mm, okay. And I also saw that she was lonely and she needed a friend and, and, and I think Doug did as well, although he was pushing away, but uh, it was like a kindred spirit relationship. Okay, yeah. All right, that's... So did, did either one of you have any experiences in the house you were shooting in, the one that uh, that was the, the subject of the property? Or, I'm sorry, of the movie? Uh, when we first got there, it just felt like there was so much history in the house. 
and uh, there was a caretaker of the house, and people, you know, would come and visit the house or who knew the house or who were related to the caretaker, and they would say things like what they had seen in the house or the presence that was there in the house. Um, I know that there was a presence in the house that didn't like smoking. Really? Um, for <laughs> some reason, and I don't remember exactly what the story related to that was, but did not like smoking in the house. Is that something you were told or something you experienced and you know it? I didn't experience it, actually. I don't, I didn't, you know, smoke okay. in the house. But, um, I don't know if any of the crew experienced it. I don't think anybody smoked, but it was something that someone who was at the house one of the days we were there that, you know, I was always trying to find out what, what, what's going on with this house. And uh, they said that, well, you know, but I did feel a really nice um, presence in the house. I, I felt welcomed. So I didn't ever feel like we were being pushed out of the house or right. it was like the house was really happy to have us tell the story. It really felt that way. Pete, do you know if there was any kind of a history of, of fire or anything at the house? At the house? Uh, no. I uh, well, I heard the same thing Lily did, that apparently the, the previous owner, a woman that, that owned the place, she she did not let you smoke. And if somebody lit a pipe or lit a, you know, lit a joint, whatever they were doing, <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she, got, she got pissed off and she threw out. So apparently that, you know, she, she passed away and, and she still, apparently she still, okay. that, that rule is still in effect because so, you try to light a cigarette. So she just didn't prefer it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was not the Marlboro man. Yeah. Apparently. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense, right? She didn't want the house to burn. She was in charge of the house. And... Yeah. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so what, um, what do you guys uh, think about the movie as, as a whole? I mean, what is it you want the audience, audiences to watch it to get out of the film? We'll start with you, Lily. Yeah. Start with me. Okay. Well, uh, what would you like the um, audiences to get out of the film that watch the movie? Well, what uh, what I got when I watched it was that it was very, um, it flowed really well. It was very entertaining. I felt very sucked in to the story. I very much wanted to know where it was going at all times. And it was really well directed by uh, Quinn Saunders. Um, and it was a really well written script by Pete and his writing partner, and um, and it was just, the set design was beautiful, and everything was was just uh, really really worked in our favor. So um, if there were any ghosts, they were definitely in our you know supporting us. Awesome. Um, and I just hope that I. I mean, for me, it was the psychology that was interesting of this of this man who um, isolates himself and from his best friend who who lets the guilt eat away at him and uh, you know lets it drive him drive him out of his mind. Um, and I think that the lesson that I would take from it, or that I that I took from it, is that if you have uh, darkness. Instead of pushing it down and denying it, you really have to bring it into the light. I don't mean that in any kind of biblical or like you know right. religious sense of the word, but just that if there's a darkness that is bugging you and you don't know what it is, and uh, to not displace it, to project it, or 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 um, or try to put it on something else, like, like, like Doug, the main character of this movie, was trying to fix this house, and he would not leave this house, and he was just trying to fix the house, which is what my character went crazy about, because she was trying to get him to, like, chill out and, like, talk, mm -hmm. and just have a conversation, and it was just, like, not happening. So just to talk through things. I know it's, it's, it's women say this all the time, just talk through, talk mm -hmm. about it, talk about it, we, like, we always want to talk, and you guys probably... Feel like you're going to go crazy, but I do think that I do think that that is very important um, to get our so-called folks out and our demons out of the closet and to put everything in the clear. And yeah. if if God had done that, there would be no movie. So <laughs> that's, I think that's the lesson here. Awesome. Okay. Now, Pete, how about you? When you were writing the movie, did you have a um, a point that you were trying to get across? 
Um, yeah, we're writers and we're looking for a sale. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I just, I, I'm, I'm a purist with this kind of stuff. Just kind of, we wanted to write a, a fun movie. We had wanted to write a fun horror movie, like I said, that uh, kind of a throwback to the old school where it wasn't about pyrotechnics and, 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 yeah. and gore and all that kind of stuff. Just creepy, you know, creepy shit going on in the dark and people, you know, and that kind of stuff. The style of stuff that, you know, your girlfriend's covering her eyes up with the, with the, with the blanket right. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so we just wanted people to, you know, to uh, have a good time with it and, and maybe get a little scared, talk about it on the way home. If we can, if we can uh, intrude on people's sleep, that's that, and we're good. You're and winning. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, that that's was, that awful. Was... <laughs> and, and, it, and it is a relatable topic. I mean, it's yeah. you know, in the terms of people who have who have had something that they regret that they let eat away at them, and even if it's just a simple, you know, a breakup of a, of a relationship, because you know, you people go through that sometimes too. It doesn't have to be that anybody died. Yeah. It it, it could be nearly yeah. anything that you that you regret that you let eat away at you in the psychology, like you were saying. You know the psychology of the uh, of the trauma, I guess, that really is your downfall. Oh yeah, I when uh, I did a lot, of, we did a lot of research for um, for the film, and uh, one of the things that that really struck me early on, which was which was kind of a, a guiding light through the whole thing, was uh, they say when when someone loses someone young, and in this in this case, uh, it's they're a young couple, and <clears> they, <throat> right. they, they just gotten engaged. They say that uh, the person uh, the person left behind doesn't mourn the life they had; they're mourning the future. I was like, wow, that's that's I never wow. I, once once it was like a prism. Once I once I, I, I we read that kind of like, all right, this is how this is the guiding force of the whole of the whole right. Wow, the that's, whole screenplay. So yeah. and that's that's pretty much how, how that's it went a line in the movie. I think yeah, I think we did crib that. Oh. Yeah, I think we did put that in there. Yeah, teaser. No. Yeah, that was deep. <laughs> now, uh, Lily. Uh, now, I won't. I won't tell him if you absolutely hated it. But what do you think about working with uh, with uh, Jody Quigley? Oh, he was wonderful. Oh, okay. So Good. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, awesome. Um, yeah, super fun and easy to work with, and uh, super committed to the scene and the truth of the scene and the craft, and just really quiet. He's a very quiet guy. Um, I think that he he really delved into the character, so I think you know at one point it was maybe. He was always very kind and polite, but I think maybe at some point when you get really deep into a story like this, and he was shooting every day, he was at the house every day. Um, so at some point, you start to maybe lose track of who's who is the character of him. He's obviously a very sane person and a healthy <laughs> man, but um, the character isn't, and he had to get into that character's mind. So, so yeah, it was interesting to watch that transformation from one day to the next, sometimes I wouldn't be on set for a few days, and I'd show up, and Doug, Doug looks like the character. I'm frazzled. And, <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, Lily, uh, do you have any uh, projects coming up? Um, I've got a couple of projects coming out. I just uh, I did a movie with Ridley Scott um, called The Martian. Nice. With, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of little scenes in there with... Um, to a tell you for uh, from Twelve Years a Slave um, with Kristen Wiig or Wiig, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, um, and I I just filmed a an independent feature about a dollar bill that travels through different people's lives, kind of like a red balloon scenario, like different vignettes, and I just filmed that last weekend. Wow, in San Diego. And I've got a, a short film um, that might be going to a cardinal or in the final round, so fingers crossed for that. And a couple of other movies coming out. Um, actually, this is like a good month for me. I have a Disney movie coming out too. Um, my my you saw my film two years, uh, three years ago, um, the summer before Apparition is coming out uh, on VOD and DVD in the states. It's called The Smoke. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming out now, you know, that I've been waiting for. These things take a long time. Like we filmed Apparition two years ago, mm -hmm. and it's just now come yeah. out a few weeks ago. So these that's, things take a lot of yeah. time, and sometimes they all come out at once, and that's <laughs> to be what's going on. Awesome. And and now, of course, um, anybody that's interested, they can uh, actually uh, meet you as well as other cast members uh, this Sunday, June fourteenth at seven thirty, at the historic yep. Doylestown Inn at the Let's see, at the County Theater at the Doylestown, PA. And um, let's see, tickets are $15 and available at www. Uh, 
wow, I can't even read. Excuse me. This is why I couldn't be an actor. You know, I can, <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> Countytheater.org. So um, they'll be able, again, this, this uh, Sunday, they'll be able to meet you. They'll be seeing the, uh, seeing the movie and having a meet and greet. And you'll be there, right? Yes, I will. Awesome. I'm very excited. All right. Cool. All right, Lily. Uh, well, I want to thank you very much for taking time out to uh, come on our little show here and uh, and give us your, you. your thoughts on the movie and, and uh, the paranormal and, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. When I make it big, maybe, you know, I'll start a movie with you, so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would love that. All right, sweet. I would love, I, I would love to see that, too. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, Lily, thank you very much, and uh, okay, hopefully we'll be, uh, we'll be seeing and talking okay, to you bye. soon. Bye, Lily. You, you and Earl sound bye. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Wow, very. Right. Oh my gosh, she's she's very nice. She's very she's nice awesome. Lady. She's terrific. I guess wow. I I spent I was on the set one day and I, I talked to her for like five minutes. You could just tell she's oh she's yeah. very, so sweet. Yeah. See yeah. now I feel bad for hanging up on the first call. See that? <laughs> Me. <Damn it. laughs> yeah, I know. That was well. all, Lily. If you're listening still, that was all Rick. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like throw me under a bus, uh, no. Doug. Well, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, and now, timing just perfectly online, I believe we have uh, Mr. Jody Quigley. Yes, you're speaking to him. Jody, how you doing? <laughs> Thank you for joining us here on Paradelphia. Jody hey, is absolutely, uh, man. Thanks for having me. Jody, no problem. Jody is another one of the stars of the movie. We just spoke with uh, Lily Bourdain, and uh, Jody plays Doug in the movie. He's the guy with all the problems. <laughs> Hence yeah. why my name's Doug, so I have all the problems. That's, that's selling it short. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was it? Uh, what was it like uh, shooting this this movie? We were talking with uh, with Lily when we were talking with Lily. We talked about how this is more of a psychological uh, thriller than really a horror movie. Would you agree with that? Um, yeah, absolutely. It's not one, really one of those like you know, slash and grab, and there's like blood and guts everywhere. You know, but there's um, it's definitely more of like a suspenseful sort of playing tricks with your mind. You kind of don't really know what's going on until the final minutes, sort of, kind of how it plays out. Right. Now, your your character, uh, you know, without giving too much of the movie away, your character basically has a, a huge loss, uh, which kind of drives the movie in, in the direction it eventually goes. Um, did you have a tough time playing that type of, of of a role? Did you have to pull from personal experience or how, how do you go about preparing for something like that um yeah i mean for me like you know everyone works differently you know whether they're you know like a method actor or, or what have you i just try and draw like i guess parallels you know that's something that i can relate to that this guy's dealing with right now and i can emotionally get to where he's to that state of mind um that seems to work for me i mean everyone's different uh there's a lot to do in 18 days uh, i'll say that you know with 227 scenes uh you know, cast and crew, we really had to scramble and work our butts off to try and, you know, beat daylight and uh, get the scenes done we needed to get done that day. And if not, we were doing overtime and coming back the next day at, like, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and working until, like, 3 a.m., you know, trying to beat the sun, you know, rising the next day. <laughs> so um, it was a lot to undertake, for sure. Yeah. Right. Now, Pete, Pete uh, Cafaro is still here with us in studio, and uh, Pete was, wrote the movie. Um, when you wrote the part mm-hmm. of Doug, did you – I've heard that when when writers sometimes write, they write with a specific like a uh, an actor in mind to to play the role, and then they kind of right. work from there. Yeah. Did you do the same? Um, and the, first of all, hey Jody, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Man? How you doing? Good. I, I met you. Real, I met you real quick on the set. You, I think you were running lines or something. I don't want to bother you. You look like you're really into it. But I came out. I think I said hello and shook your hand. Um, so this is the first time I formally introduced myself. Um, uh, Jody, uh, Jody did an excellent job. Um, we. When we were writing, and it was funny, we uh, we didn't like mention like who would be like actors because then it, there's a pigeonhole in that because you start thinking about a particular actor, then you subconsciously start writing to that sort of the, right. to, to what you know of that actor, and we didn't want we had an idea of, of what we wanted. Uh, it was just kind of like he, you know, the character Doug was just he was just a, a regular guy, kind of kind of a rugged guy. He's he's fixing up the house, you know. It's kind of he's just a guy that anybody could relate to. That's and which which we were mm-hmm. hoping would make the his his fall more tragic because kind of like. He's the kind of guy like you don't suspect a guy like this would would harbor such such dark intentions, mm-hmm. and you know, and you've seen a movie and you find out what happens. But you know, it was basically, we we had the kind of the type of person in mind, not so much uh, not so much an actor. Right. Um, yeah. Now, now, Doug, you were uh, oh, Doug. I'm calling Doug. <laughs> Saying Doug sitting here, you played Doug. <laughs> I'm going crazy here. Wait, no, I just want to tell the audience he didn't play me. 
<laughs> so no, this is not based on this is not based on the life of Doug Hogan. Wait, right, Pete? No, no, just no not, not at all. Okay, <laughs> that would have been a real horror. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. See. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> and cut take two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jody, now when you when you've played um, other roles, have you uh, had anything similar to this in, in anything else that you've uh, you've done? Um, no, not really. I mean, like the I've did one movie when I where I played like a biker, like in a gang, and you know I never even rode a motorcycle in my life. So um, <laughs> my my brother in law, fortunately, like he's into it, and he borrowed one of his other brothers. Uh, motorcycles it was like a little like you know 120 cc or something like that a little tiny guy and i learned how to ride on that even though i didn't need to ride for the movie it was, i just kind of thought it would be useful just in case they're like all right guys we're all pulling out of this parking lot and i'm like guys don't know how to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> so, so i think it's gonna be good knowledge to have um and that guy was just kind of like you know he was sort of like the second in command sort of like you know you know the boss says jump and he says how high kind of mentality right, yeah. you know so that's the last thing that i played and after that, I played uh, a serial killer actually for like a teaser for a mini series. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting pigeonholed now. Or that <laughs> kind of, like the weirdo, like you know, slasher killer, and I'm just like I'm a nice, I'm a nice guy. I don't know what happened. You the know? the so, crazy everyman. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're gonna walk down the street. People are gonna recognize you. Just start hating you for no uh, reason. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? <laughs> They're gonna cross and go to the other side, and I'm like, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> now we. Yeah. We asked uh, this question to Lily, and I'm, I'm curious because of the type of movie this is. Do you have any personal beliefs in the uh, paranormal? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say so. I mean, uh, you know, I worked down at the, uh, the Dorstown Inn, and that's um, a really old building. You know, it was built in, like, 1902, and even people there are just like, I don't like going downstairs at night. Like, it freaks me out, you know, and I've had glasses, like, fall over before there, and Granted, granted, you think, like, oh, it's someone upstairs walking around too loud and, like, you know, it was just a vibration or whatever. But sometimes just when, like, the hair on the back of your neck stands up, there's definitely something out there sometimes. And I, I'm a believer to a degree, for sure, that there's some sort of paranormal existence in certain spots. Yeah. No. Yeah, uh, yeah I was, ahead, that's, that's what I was actually going to ask. You know, going with that, uh, where where you sh- uh, shot the? I know you shot it in s- several different locations, but the main mm-hmm. the main house. I mean, what did you think, especially the especially that basement and just the different feel of the house? I mean, what what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, dude, it was it was like uber creepy. I mean, <laughs> they couldn't have found like a a better location to be honest. I mean, I mean, fortunately for the script, having so many scenes. Um, it was nice to just have the house kind of be almost its own animal. Like the house itself was its own character, you know? Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to showcase that with, you know, lighting and everything they did, like great cinematography and what have you. But, um, yeah, the house itself was, the basin was just like, dusty and there was like stuff everywhere. And there was like some well that was like dug or I didn't, I didn't even know what the heck it was. And, you know, you could barely even get down the stairs. I mean, it must've been like, <laughs> almost a 90 degree angle like yeah. it was like walking straight down it's like a pirate ship you know? ladder <laughs> so yeah it was, it was hard to actually run up those steps i was like don't roll your ankle don't roll your ankle <laughs> you know production's gonna slow down for two days so um yeah it was, it was it's a cool house like the way it was designed was was cool but definitely with the paint peeling and the cracked walls and the foundation going and all this other stuff it was it was like the perfect spot for for the script awesome. for sure yeah, yeah. now we yeah. uh yeah, we, we, we've, you know, kind of t- kicked around the thought that this was a movie that was based um, partially on the isolation of the character. Um, and we, we, yeah, we talked about uh, how this kind of, uh, actually Pete brought up The Shining, how it was kind of, in, yeah. in a mm-hmm. way, this, yeah. a similar situation. Um, mm-hmm. w- would you would you agree? And, and if, if, if so, mm-hmm. did you kind of use that as sort of a, a basis for the character? Um, yeah, I mean, I would, I would totally agree with when I read the script and even like watching the dailies and kind of watching it all slowly come to life that The Shining was like a sort of a direct parallel to this kind of movie where this guy is like encased in this place and the walls are closing in on him and each day he thinks he's figuring it out, but each day he's actually going deeper down the rabbit hole and getting more crazy and more crazy and more crazy. And he's kind of the only one who doesn't know it, you know? So, right. yeah, in that regard, it's definitely, it's definitely a similar Similar story in a way, you know, similar basis in a way. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no. Now, you know, going with that, with with playing the character of Doug and everything that he went through from the very beginning to the end, 
I mean, we would mention and Pete had mentioned it was like an 18-day 18, 18 shoot going back and forth, but mainly at the house. I mean, how did you, I mean, was it difficult to kind of play that pretty much psychological breakdown character? Or, uh, I mean, how did you, did you find it difficult to kind of get out of that mindset once you were done filming? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to become depressed yeah, like yourself. Sure. It was it was difficult because, you know, I mean, everything shot out of sequence, obviously. So there's some scenes where you're just like, oh, you know, now I'm like happy-go-lucky guy. And everything's good. And then, like, the next scene, I'm, like, strangling some shit. You know? So to go from, to go from that to that, it's, it's draining. It's, that's the only word I can describe it. So, I mean, there was definitely a couple times, like, on set, you know, that I definitely had, like, mini breakdowns or I came home and, like, broke down. Wow. You know, like just being emotionally drained, like from trying to, you know, because you got to do it a couple times, or how many times it takes to get to the right spot, you know, or or what have. So it was, it's hard to like bouncing back and forth. Like if I was sad the entire time, yeah, it would be depressing, but at least like I'm stuck in that sadness. It's hard to go from like sad to like, okay, now everything's good, everything's good for the next like two hours, and then now I'm back <laughs> to killing this girl, I'm yeah. gonna cry again, you know. So all that stuff kind of compounds upon itself, and you sort of. I don't know, you sort of get lost, and you sort of just, I don't know, you, you're definitely drained emotionally by the time the day's over, for sure. Yeah. Now, what, yeah. what, uh, what attracted you to uh, the role of Doug when you read the script? What, what, what made you, uh, you know, take interest in that part specifically? Um, well, I, initially, I, I just, I liked the script. I mean, I just thought it was, it's like, a clever idea of, you know, off the beaten path of, you know, the the regular slasher movies where it's like college kids in the woods, you know, and they take the wrong path. What could go wrong? You know, and then all of a sudden there's like some guy killing them, you know? So it's, it's not that cookie cutter kind of script. And that's what drawn me to it initially. And just the fact that, I mean, even, even reading it, you weren't really sure what was going on and what was real, and what was not. And that sort of attracted me to it too. It's just, it's, it plays with your head. And I don't know, there's, there's some movies out there that, do do that but this one in particular really got to me so and i like the character and i like the writing and i was just like if i can get this part i really want to own it so that's yes. what i tried to do now 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 pete you know of course listening you know between between judy and, and lily and of course seeing the movie i mean what is it like for you to see something you wrote down originally come to life and, you know, talk to someone who actually played the main character and see him go through the emotions. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? It's, 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 it's amazing. I mean, like, when you first sit down, because I, I, I guess I was, um, they, uh, I wasn't involved with the production when, when they were shooting the film. We had, uh, my son was born that summer, so anybody has kids that you know, you're, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> your days are done. Um, so I, I, got, I got to visit the set one day. I met Lily. I met Jody. Uh, I saw some dailies, and uh, just from the dailies I was watching, it's like, wow, this this thing, even the dailies were creeping. That's, dailies are just scenes out of context. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching the dailies, like, wow, that that's creepy. That's effective. And um, a few months later, uh, I saw a cut of the film, and it, it worked. I was like, wow. And then it was funny. When I was watching it, you kind of forget. And, like, <laughs> then you saw, I kind of realized, like, wait, we, we, we wrote this. I was going to say, wow, kinda, I did yeah, that? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like, because well, you, you get wrapped up in it. You, you start you start watching the movie, and you're like, that, that's pretty cool. And then you, it kind of it kind of washed on you. Like, wait, this 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 you know this is kind of cool. This is you wrote this, and your name you know you see your name up on the screen. It's it's, I mean it's it's a dream come true. I mean, we, you know we, we we wrote it a few years ago, and it's it it, it was a it was a long path to get here, and it was really really gratifying. And, and just like to see to see Jody um, as Doug and uh, Lily uh, Katrina, just it was just it's just it's 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 almost surreal because you know, you're watching these are characters that you that you brought to life or you you put on the page. I mean the actors brought them to life, but you you know you, you were. I remember some some, uh, some scenes you're, you're watching and, and you remember what you're doing when you're writing the dialogue and just to watch to watch it all come together as a film. It's just it's it's it's, it's really really no words. It's really it's, it's just it was just an incredible experience and like wow. so awesome. everybody was great in it and I was just I was very very happy with the with, with, with the end result. When, when you were that. writing it, I mean I'm I'm sure as you're writing it, you have the the scene playing in your own head, um, and then when they go to actually film that particular scene or any particular scene. Did they give you um, any kind of uh, input to su make suggestions, or was this kind of you kind of left it up to the the directing team? Or I, I think so. Yeah, with, with that script, I think a lot of it was uh, was interpretive. Like uh, I worked with um, I'd worked with Quinn before uh, before they actually shot the film. Like, you know, we had discussions about the script and all, and he would say, I think you know, he, he would make suggestions about how something's going to play, and you just you, you really leave it up to the actor. I mean, the actor that's that's. They're the professional. They they know how how to get the emotion out of that scene. And and a lot of times you, they they play a scene, 
and they'll they'll find something that you didn't even know like wow that that wasn't even an occurrence to me it's like wow they brought something they brought another level to that scene and it just it just wow that that really that really brought over top and made it made it click so it's 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 uh, it's, a, it's a collaborative effort, and the actors, I mean, they, they do their thing, and it just it just brings everything to life. Yeah, that's got to be quite like Doug said. It's got to be quite a uh, an experience to to see something that you that you wrote and created, then acted out in front of yeah. you. It was it was it was cool. It's gonna be it wild. Was, yeah, it was really. <laughs> now, Jody, did you did you read the entire script before you uh, you shot the movie? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. okay I, think I, I read it a couple times, to be honest. <laughs> because I've heard of different. Um, I don't know if it's movies or, or TV shows that are going episode, you know, episodic TV shows, but sometimes they won't let the actors read too far, far forward. Uh, so they're, they're even surprised by the, you know, what's coming right. up next. Yeah. I, heard, I heard that show uh, Lost did that a lot. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. They didn't, like, they never even were, weren't telling them how it was going to end or where their character was going to go or whatever. Right. What, so, what do you, what do you um, think about that? Yeah. Uh, I don't that... know. Maybe that's more for TV. I don't know. But, uh, I'm glad I got to read the whole thing. <laughs> I knew where it was going. Okay. You know? um, <laughs> Without having acted, either, either I wasn't way, sure. When you're like when you're shooting like so out of sequence, you don't really know what's going on anyway. Like you know, I mean, even you know, there's even days when I was talking to Clint, it's like, all right, when I was doing this thing, I'm like, okay, so wait, where am I now? Like, <laughs> is this, am I am I like is she alive still or am I what who what, you know? So it's like one of those situations where you yourself get lost anyway. I mean, I read this thing like three or four times. I'm just like, where am I right now? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, it's definitely a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. Fun challenge, but a challenge. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, do you have anything uh, in the uh, in the coming in the coming in the uh, mm-hmm. up and coming here? Uh, oh, you mean like acting wise? Correct. Yes, or or anything. Um, yeah. Um, well, sort of. Uh, you shot like a teaser for. Um, as you know, we're playing at the, at the County Theater in Dawestown on on Sunday at 7:30, and uh, we're doing we're doing a couple of teasers before that. Um, and I don't know if I can divulge it or whatever. You guys can just cut it out, I suppose, or whatever. <laughs> but it's called uh, it's called Dante's Paradise, and it's basically about like this uh, this, this uh, serial killer and or brain um, forensic brain analyst who is trying to find the serial killer, and the serial killer ends up being his own son, basically. So uh, we shot a little teaser for that, and that's going to play there. So that's kind of the last thing I did. And then uh, there's another guy I've been in contact with that wrote a pretty cool little script that kind of goes back to the Civil War and uh, bounces back from the Civil War to today. And uh, it's about, like, possession and kind of, like, poltergeist sort of thing. So um, mm. I might have a part in that, fingers crossed. So we'll see. But right now that's kind of kind of where I'm at. Very cool. Wish there was more to tell you, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Doug here claimed he wanted to uh, to star in a movie with with Lily before she yeah. got off. So you know, you I know. guess he's going to make the same offer to you. Yeah, exactly. So you know, one, one of these days I'm going to make it big, just past this radio thing. So you know, <laughs> look, there you go. look him up. <laughs> yeah, look me up. Google me. No. <laughs> But uh, but it, now uh, again for the listeners out there, just like uh, you know when we spoke to Lily now. Uh, Jody, you're going to be at the premiere on this Sunday, June 14th at 7.30 at the uh, County Theater in Doylestown, PA. Correct, yep. Okay, and uh, again... And I'll, and I'll probably be uh, bartending at the Hattery afterwards for people coming over. <laughs> oh, wow. So you get to meet the uh, guy that starred in the movie, yeah. and he'll give you a drink, too. Order, order a drink from <laughs> yeah, him. Order a drink from him. <laughs> yeah, but uh, again, uh, those tickets they, uh, are $15 and available at uh, www.countytheater.org. And uh, tickets for the meet and greet, uh, where you can meet the stars, uh, including Jody, are uh, $20, and they are available at signupgenius.com. And uh, you can, for more information, contact Claudine at events at Hattery... Wait, how, yeah, howdertytown dot com. I had the same problem reading everything. So, so, uh, so yeah. So you know, you have a chance to meet him and tell him your favorite part about him going insane. <laughs> awesome, sounds good. <laughs> All right, Jody. Well, uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking time out tonight to come on to our no, uh, our show here, yeah. and uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see you in the in the near future and see some more of your of your work. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. Take care, Jody. Thanks, Jody. All right, All right take, take care. care. Have a good night, guys. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Again, you know, it, it's funny. The they're they're so laid back and they're normal, like uh, you know, they're, they're actors in movies and things like that. Usually, I mean, they're not every single one 
But, you know, a lot of times you come across them, they're just like, yeah, I was in a movie. I'm better than you. But they're not like that yeah. at all. They're just yeah. regular laid back and down to earth. So it's pretty cool. Yeah.